As Thomas Jefferson once wrote, the God that gave us liberty and life gave them to us at the same time. Moral clarity is an essential virtue in our world today. And for 60 years, cynics and skeptics have proven that we have been looking to false choices in the Middle East. They have claimed that we must choose either freedom or stability, either democracy or security. They have said that the United States could either uphold its principles or advance its policies. But by trying to purchase stability at the price of liberty, we achieved neither. And we saw the result of that on a fine September morning. That is why President Bush has rejected 60 years of false choices in the Middle East. And as he said last week at the International Republican Institute, the United States has a new policy, a strategy that recognizes that the best way to defeat the ideology that uses terror as a weapon is to spread freedom and democracy. The President holds the deep belief that all human beings desire and deserve to live in liberty. This idea, of course, did not immediately find favor. Many continued to defend the false choices of the past. But we knew then and we know now. America's message is clear. Our principles are sound and our policies are, are right. And today, the nations of the world are finally joining with the United States to support the cause of freedom. We measure our success in the democratic revolutions that have spanned the entire world, vibrant revolutions of rose and orange and purple and tulip and cedar. The destiny of the Middle East is bound up in this global expansion of freedom. The days of thinking that this region was somehow immune to democracy are over. Working with our G8 partners, the United States has created the broader Middle East and North Africa initiative to build partnerships with people in the region who are working for greater liberty. The flagship of this bold new policy is the Forum for the Future, an unprecedented international venue to amplify the voices of reform that are redefining the region. Together, we will tackle the urgent goals of the forum, political openness, economic liberty, educational opportunity, and the empowerment of women. Today, nations all across the world are speaking a common language of reform, and they are helping citizens throughout the broader Middle East to transform the parameters of debate in their societies. The people of this region are expressing ideas and taking actions that have would, been, would have been think, unthinkable only one year ago. Some in the Arab media have even asked why the only real democracies in the Middle East are found in the quote-unquote occupied lands of Iraq and the Palestinian territories. What an incredible thought. Today, citizens in the region are demanding that their governments respond to this simple, audacious question. And many states will have to answer their people's call for genuine reform. Jordan and Bahrain and Qatar and Morocco are all taking steps to introduce greater openness into their political systems. Egypt has amended its constitution with electoral reform, and even Saudi Arabia has held multiple elections. And just last week, remarkably, the Kuwaiti legislature granted its women citizens the right to vote. <laughs> Kuwait's recognition that it must include all of its people in political life is hopefully an example that its neighbors will follow. In Lebanon, Hundreds of thousands of citizens have demanded an end to the foreign suffocation of their country. With strong international support, led by the United States and by France, 
and with an explicit mandate from the United Nations Security Council, Syria has gotten the message loud and clear that it is not welcome in Lebanon. The Syrian regime has withdrawn its decades-long military presence. And at the end of this month, the Lebanese people will go to the polls and set a new course of action. But we cannot rest. Syria must also remove its intelligence forces and allow the Lebanese forced people to be free. <laughs> to be sure, a vital source of inspiration for all of these reformers comes from the people of Iraq who defied threats of murder to vote in free elections in January. They declared with one voice that the will of the people, not the whim of a dictator, would determine Iraq's future. They declared with that same voice that no Iraqi regime would ever again torture its people, invade its neighbors, attack its neighbors, and offer financial incentives to Palestinian homicide bombers. Today, Iraq has a transitional government that will soon begin framing a new national constitution. Free nations everywhere have rallied to Iraq's side. There is a coalition of 30 countries helping the Iraqi people to defend themselves from murderers and terrorists. NATO is training Iraq's army officers, police forces, and civilian administrators. And next month, at the request of Iraq's new government, the United States and the European Union will co-host an international conference to build greater support for democracy, prosperity, and security.